Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. Today we're checking out Chaos or K A O S. Okay, truth be told, I'm not really sure how to pronounce this. If I pronounce it as one word it, in English, it would be chaos, but maybe they just want K A O S. And it is a lean KDE distribution. I'm really excited about this. I've been really focused on finding rolling releases and I love KDE and this is a rolling release KDE distribution. It is focused on KDE. So I wanted to check it out. So we'll just see what this has to offer real quick and then we'll go to the live environment, go through the install process and see if it's for us. Chaos is an independent distribution focused on Qt and KDE. What I love is they go ahead and define who the target user is. I mean, I guess if I'm not the target user, maybe I just stop checking it out. I don't know, but I did read it already and I am a potential target user. Targets users who have tried many operating systems, distributions, desktop environments, and have found they prefer a distribution that uses all its available resources to work on one desktop environment to make that the best it can be and know that after their search is the best for them is KDE Plasma. One of the other things I read through, I'm not gonna bore you guys with that, but I read through the about, it, even though it uses the Pac-Man package manager, this is not an Arch distribution. They procure and build their own packages, but use Pac-Man. They also use some other elements from OpenSUSE as well, and kind of just mix and match and get what they want put together. They also procure their packages, so they don't have a whole bunch, you don't have, 10 different audio players, for instance. They kind of make it KDE-centric and go from there. They kind of tighten things down specifically for the way they want it to be used. So here's what you're greeted with when you boot into the live environment. I'm using Vert Manager, and this is a virtual machine. I've given this virtual machine 16 gigabytes of RAM and a course. You are greeted with a welcome screen. We're gonna go ahead and start with the install process and then we will take a look at what it has to offer. Install Chaos. This is a very familiar installer. It already sees my time zone, my keyboard. They're giving us a choice here of going ahead and installing LibreOffice or not up front. Then they give this option of creating a minimal Plasma desktop install. So if you don't want all the KDE suite of applications, you don't have to have it. And they allow you to select this little device here and we do want a bootloader but they give you the option to not have a bootloader and we set up our user up front then we have our summary and it's time to install we will go ahead and speed up this install and we'll see you on the other side We're going to go ahead and restart the system. I would like to note that there was a tab, and you probably saw me switching back and forth, that allowed you to see the log of what the, was happening in the install process. I always appreciate that. And we are in the desktop environment. This is a very KDE specific distribution. They've chosen to integrate everything they can within KDE, very focused on that, focused on their applications. Uh, the Linux kernel, they've taken some pieces from OpenSUSE and Arch and their own compiling of, of things. This is rolling release. You will always get the newest of their packages, but you should know just this is not based on Arch or this is in this is a Debian based distribution. This is their own distribution. And you can see here what is chaos. We do have this welcome screen set up, which is nice with some tabs down on the bottom. We can take a look at what they've chosen for us to see, Plasma theme. So they're letting you get this set up up front if you do not like their default theming. But this is nice for someone who is setting this up the very first time and not necessarily knowing if you've ever dug into the KDE menu for settings, it is large. It is not complex, it's just got, a, you can really drill down to a lot of options and you can get lost in there. So this is nice that they have that set. Setting up your virtual desktops. You can add, remove screen settings. You can go ahead and have that set here, which is wonderful. Color palette and fonts. 
Now there's this tab down at the bottom here, installed selected packages. Please choose one of the groups to see the various packages each group contains. So I want to see video editors. Looks like right here, we can add some things up front that we may want. Remember, these are their own packages. Just because it, we could access it through Pac-Man does not mean it is Arch, okay? We can add four really nice video editing tools here that they have procured for us to use. And I'm gonna go ahead and add Caden Live, install selected packages. So it's drawing a window here, asking for a password. Just remember we are using a virtual machine. So things like this where the window is drawn weird, I wouldn't, that's probably the fact that it's a virtual machine. This is completely Pac-Man. I use this daily to update my Endeavor OS operating system. There was a bunch of updates that needed to happen when we logged in. It is going ahead with that install process and running the update. Now, I missed that I could have excluded certain packages. That's on me, but I wanted you to know. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll skip forward. So once this is installed, that, that is not anyone's fault but my own. We're gonna have an updated chaos system. So we have Caden Live installed. We see it here in our menu. Pulls up here, it boots up, ready for us to use. This is nice that they have these here install uh, set up this way, but this is what they have for you to use. They have Falcon as their web browser, and then they have four other choices. Um, also image manipulation, you have GIMP, Krita, Digicam, Nomax, Office Applications. We already have LibreOffice. These are some of the music applications. We did get to see how it installed from here. I do appreciate that. They've got a way to access setting up your wallpaper, looking at your documentation here. They've got their forum, additional kernels, Pac-Man. Reading up on this is quite nice. Then uh, setting up your firewall, configuring the search. You know, this is great to see what plugins are available for it to use and how it searches and getting that set up and tailored to you. That's always nice. And then setting up what are the default applications. For instance, if I wanted to change the terminal emulator to Yaquake instead of console, that is where you can change it there. About, this is their newest release, 2022.04, <laughs> April of 2022. Not a bad naming convention, but let's go ahead and explore the desktop a little more. You've got your panel uh, bar over here to the right hand side. You've got your menu over here. We've got console right here. So they have this set um, just a little differently. They have gigabytes instead of megabytes for the defined amount of use and available for memory, but it's 7.8 gigabytes or 15.3 gigabytes available. So that would be 780 megabytes being used. Okay. And most of these are set specifically within the KDE environment. They really focused everything around KDE. So you're not gonna be able to go, well, I don't like KDE, so I'll use something else. You're not gonna be able to do that with a chaos. It's essentially, yeah, I like KDE and I like a procured group of packages and I want everything developed around that. Just really streamlining things. I think that's a, an interesting approach but we can go ahead and change the theme to a dark theme right here, making it nice, quick, and easy. We also can choose some of these other global themes. Define with this default theme for now. Croeso is what the welcome screen is called. C-R-O-E-S-O. -E and it's a nice looking one. I like it. We have our LibreOffice, multimedia, internet stuff. The Falcon web browser is what the default web browser is. Enter address or search with DuckDuckGo, just so you know how that is set up. If I wanna add a web browser, I either need to go to that welcome screen and install the package there, or I can go to Octopi. So here is Octopi here, and what it does is it gives you an opportunity to graphically install packages. I've decided to go ahead and add a web browser, and Boom, now I have Firefox. If I don't like Falcon, I can choose Firefox. 
So I will go to Internet and I have Falcon or Firefox available for me. Octopi should look very familiar to you. It does to me because it reminds me, you know, of Synaptic Package Manager, which is nice and wonderful. You have this bar over here on the right. If you need to drill down to specific applications, but you're not sure the name for searching. So if I went to education, I could go through and see that. Now remember, they have procured their packages. If I go to office, I'm not gonna see a hundred different options for myself. I'm not gonna have 10 different options for Office Suites, right? We have LibreOffice installed. That's what it is. That's great. That may not be your jam. Just be aware that's how this works. Now let's go to that information, that info center, and let's just check a couple things. We have KDE Plasma version 5.24.5. The Qt version is 5.15. The kernel is 5.17.5-1, and we're using X11. So here is the system monitor here, just a little different view. We have a couple applications open now, so you can see the memory, the disk space used after install, and what's happening in the CPU. So this menu should feel very comfortable for you. Nothing extra really installed here. You do have your classic KDE applications like KDE Connect, kget, k3b, you can probably sense a theme there. You've got some extra things that you might like, having a simple screen recorder, LibreOffice. Deal with your settings and your system here. You cannot go wrong with Dolphin as a file manager, but it is nice to see how they have it laid out. You've got this little zoom piece here, which makes it nice and big, however you need it to be. And you've got the, the menu on the left-hand side, which is always nice to see. You have a lock screen, a power on this bar. You have sticky notes, the calculator, just right here, a quick calculator. That's quite nice. Your workspaces, your Dolphin, your Falcon web browser. This is your Octopi Notifier. And remember, we did update up front when we were trying to install Caden Live. Audio breakdown, this is very KDE normal your network connections. If I want to configure the wallpaper and change it, I wanna see, I always like to see what kind of things they have available, what kind of branding they have, and I don't see anything branding specific, but obviously this is a nice collection of wallpapers. They're wallpapers, there's another one. We can add widgets, which is one of the great things about KDE. For instance, we can add a web browser right here on our desktop or something that continually gets updated. You could use that there. Now we can enter edit mode and I can move this a little more optimal for this setup. Why the Linux desktop is lagging behind the Linux server uh, space. One of me is more than enough. <laughs> but I think practically, if you went to 9 to 5 Linux regularly, you could have this always loaded up on your desktop. So it's a nice option that's KDE specific, not chaos specific, but sometimes it's nice to highlight something, especially when it is a distribution that is very KDE centric, right? And I do like this simple layout for checking out applications. If I want this strawberry music player, I can install selected package, put in my password, install the package and be done in Multimedia, I'm guessing Strawberry is there. And here it is. If you like Strawberry, it's there. In your status and notifications, it's your normal KDE grouping. Now, obviously, if I wanted to completely change up the look of this, I can. But they seem to be very careful with how they have things laid out. And so I wanted to experience it the way that they had it laid out. So what do we learn with Chaos? For me, I really appreciated an approach that is a procured approach. Uh, elementary OS is another distribution that really focuses on that. They really say, hey, here's what we think is gonna work the best for this experience, here you go. They develop their desktop environment and their packages uh, are selected specifically. Some people aren't gonna like that. They want to be able to have all the options available or change their desktop environment when they choose. This specific operating system will not be for you in that case. However, if you like minimal installs of KDE with procured software applications for you to use, this very well could be an outstanding choice for you. 
This is something unique in and of itself, and I applaud them for their direction. I do like the thought process and direction. We're talking about a rolling release. We're talking about a KDE desktop environment focus. That desktop environment focus uh, is nice. It's easy to navigate, but once again, I've been using KDE, so I may not be the best use case for how easy it is to navigate around because it's KDE. But with KDE, you have a lot of configurability. So if you didn't like the layout of Chaos, you can move it around a lot. You can make it look extremely unique which just for reference, here's my desktop environment. It's KDE as well, but it's essentially the same tools. It may be aesthetic to you, it may not, but it's definitely worked within my workflow. So I wasn't a necessarily, the workflow I could definitely work with. It was very simple and I could see where they were going with it, but it's definitely something that could be easily changed if you didn't like it. I also like that they knew who their user was and they defined it up front. I don't think they wanted to hear someone complain about not having a certain web browser or email client. I also like that they decided to just kind of do their own thing, but it's very simple and I like that. I definitely can see myself using that. I do love KDE and there would be some challenges for me. I do like using DaVinci Resolve. I wonder what kind of hoops I'd have to go through to use DaVinci Resolve. Also some audio uh, setup as far as getting jack routed and, and those kinds of things. I wonder how challenging it would be for me in chaos. But if those two things specifically don't matter to you and you just want a nice, simple KDE experience, this is a good choice. This is something you should check out. I felt very comfortable in it. I'm glad that we got to experience that today. Thanks for hanging out with me today. See you next time.